Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to walk through setting up an environment to follow along with the Paul Carter assembly book. This is a, or, or PDF. Um, this is a resource that I used uh, years ago when I was teaching assembly at the university. I have several videos um, in a series on YouTube. They're they're a bit old, a little dated, maybe not the best quality, but they kept, cover a lot of these topics. So I'll add a link to that that playlist here if you're interested in checking it out. In that video series, I use a slightly different environment using SIGWIN and some other tools in order to assemble the programs that we're working on, you know, compile into an executable and then run them. And they and it loosely follows along with the instructions here. But I wanted to provide a couple of videos that I think set up a little bit more modern way of working on that. So if you're interested, um, add a link to the PDF. It's pacman128.github.io. And you can see that there's a PDF version is, is of the book in several languages. And it, it is really a great resource. So if you're learning assembly, really encourage you to start here. Now, the programs that we're going to grab, the example programs are for Microsoft. I want to have an entire Microsoft build environment for this. So the MSC examples, if you download this, you'll get um, a zip file. And I'm going to move to those in just a minute. We'll look at the, we'll look at some of them anyway in, uh, in Visual Studio Code. Now, what else you'll need? You'll need Visual Studio Community Edition, so it's all free. When you're going through the installation, you just want to make sure that you have the command line tools because we want to have the developer command prompt with the, the C compiler linked or added to the environment path so that we can just open that up, uh, open a developer command prompt, and compile our programs. The last thing that you do also need is NASM. So you can go to the NASM website, nasm.us. You can go to download and find an installer. I have 64-bit windows, so I grabbed the 64-bit installer. Now, you might have to add the path to the NASM, to the assembler, uh, to your environment. And after installation, if you just open up NASM or a NASM shell, you'll actually see that the NASM, this is the directory where, where the assembler lives. So if you add this path, to your environment variable path, then that'll solve that problem. Okay, so switching over to the code. Okay, here you can see in the Explorer on the left hand side, there's a number of files here. And my goal in this video is not to start going through the files and not even really to get into all of the, the details of how this environment was set up by the author. He does detail that to some level in the book, as well as most of these files. So I'll leave that up to you if you would like to explore that once you get your environment set up. I am going to use this first.asm as an example. And you'll see that at the beginning of first.asm, there are some instructions to help you get started. For example, here are instructions for assembling and then compiling using Microsoft. So it's a two-step process, more or less. And you know, we're going to use NASM to assemble our assembly files and then Microsoft, the, the C compiler, CL, to then take that object file. So that'll be the output from assembling and link it as well as some other files to create one executable. And then that's the program that you can run. We can debug. I'm going to add a couple more videos and show you some ways in which I think using when debug and time travel debugging will be really helpful. Uh, now, you can see that this is, uh, again, the, the, the reasons why the author set this up is detailed in the PDF. So just to keep this video uh, hopefully a little short, uh, I'll leave that to you to go and, and read up a little bit more on. Okay, um, again, scrolling through the program, you can see it's going to do a lot of things that are explained in the book. So if you're new to assembly, don't worry about getting lost in any of this detail right now because that's really what the book is about, what my videos follow along and do as well. And so our goal is just to get this code into an executable format. So to facilitate that, you'll find on my GitHub, I'll add a link here, this batch script. I'm just going to call it build.bat uh, to really just combine those two steps. So this script is going to take one argument. That's just going to be the name of your assembly file without the extension. Okay, That's going to be set as arg1. I probably could make that a little bit more obvious and change that variable name. Maybe I'll do that before I commit it to my GitHub. We do need this asm.io as an object file. So if this is the first time you're running the script, you might as well uncomment that. That will produce or assemble that, that, that assembly and produce this object file. 
And you can see in this final command, that's going to be required. So make sure that you do that. But once you have that file, you no longer need it, right? Once you have that object file created, unless you make modifications to it, which you don't need to, at least not initially, if you get really adventurous, then that's up to you. From there, we'll take the argument and add the suffix here, do a little concatenation to get the ASM file. That'll create, you know, first.asm, or I'm sorry, uh, first.object, and then use CL, which is the Visual C compiler, to create our executable. So there's the object file. And one modification that I made is to use the dash FE argument, again, with that argument to the script, so that way the output is whatever the, the assembly file name that you're using, .exe. Okay, so let's save that. I have a developer command prompt already open. We say build.bat first, and now we try to assemble. Now, this was done intentionally. You will likely get, and even if you are not wanting to use my script here, totally fine, um, you might be getting this error about unresolved external symbol, printf, and this has to do in part with how the author set up to use the C compiler to link to the standard libraries, scanf and printf. And so what I, what I think is the easiest way around that right now, I had this in a file here just to uh, make it easy to copy and paste for the video, is we're going to give the compiler a link option and we're going to tell it to use legacy standard IO, STDIO, so that'll help cover things like printf and scanf, um, those definitions, so this library file. Okay, so this is the full script that you'll find on my GitHub. Now that we've made that modification, we can go back to... Okay, and if we go to run our executable, you'll see that it works. So now we have the ability to enter numbers and to assemble the programs that we're, we're creating in those .asm files, the focus of learning assembly, and then run them. And now I'll talk about in the next video how we can debug these using WinDebug instead of uh, GDB, but it's up to you. Now you have an executable, you can use any debugger you'd like if you'd like to do debugging. One method to debug, which maybe isn't the greatest, but if you're learning, is to use some of these some of these built-in helper functions that the authors created, the dump reg and the dump stack and some of those uh, different different functions. And again, you'll read about those as you get into the text. So you can see here's an example of dumping memory at an address, and that's just sort of the, the purpose behind that. Okay, um, one last thing then that I'll leave you with is I'll also create and add to the to my GitHub this template.asm. And this is just if you want to play around with writing your own code. Of course, you could take any of the programs that are already there, but in the class that I, when I taught it, I, I just found it helpful to provide this template and make it very, you know, kind of very obvious where to put uninitialized data, initialized data, and then of course, where you start writing your code. So feel free to grab this as well and, uh, you know, copy it rename it as you're working through exercises or working on your own labs. And then you can use the same script. So we could say build.bat. I didn't create a copy of it, so I'll just use template.asm. And, oh, see, I don't use the extension. So we'll go template. And now we have template.exe. But this doesn't do anything because I didn't really add any code to it. Okay, so that's it. That'll get you up and running using just Microsoft environment to start learning assembly. So hope you enjoy. Let me know if you run into any issues or have any other questions. Thanks.